Jessica Nunca se vi que cura na boca Como este na minha nome Pra que pôr na brinca com minha nome Pelo nome Nunca se vi que cura na boca Como este na minha nome Pra que pôr na brinca com minha nome Um padilho Bem bravo Na terra sagrada Cachão na silva A me dê minha vida Music has such power to tell stories, music in itself. We don't, it, even without words, music tells stories. Um, and music connects with the past, it connects with identities, um, it connects with history, it connects with personal histories. Um, and um, so that's uh, why I think music and history make such a wonderful um, combination. To deal with this history of the whole region, who is very crucial in the perspective of uh, the history of West Africa because of the position, the geographical position of Senegal, is a very small space. But this small space had the chance to have all the ecological system of West Africa, the Sahel, the savannah and the forest and the mangrove, all together at the peak, at the end of this continent. And at the same time, it is the resume, the summary of the whole population of West Africa that you can find in this small space. And so I, I think our identity can be explained by the ecological factor, but also the historical factor is dominated by the, by the importance of the Atlantic since the 15th century. And so we can say today what is permanent is the diversity of the identities that we can find there, but also the brassage, mixing of, of all these identities all together. It is we, the new generation, that feels Gambia and Senegal are two different countries. My father never accepted that, and he never believes Gambia and Senegal is not one country, because these words were not in his vocabulary when he was born and growing up. The concept of Senegal has been given to us by foreign colon colon colonialists, and Gambia also has been given us by foreign colonialists. So it is we who should come out with the acceptance or the denial, are we going to still call ourselves Gambians and Senegalese, or are we going to call ourselves as Africans or Senegambia? So, so this, this song is about that. Tem muita força, tem muita energia, 
e uma pessoa acaba por dançar sem quiser dançar. And you know, just uh, cannot, you can't help us just need to dance. Eu creio que o Gumbe acabou por ter um, um papel decisivo na luta de libertação nacional. Eu creio que o Gumbe acaba por ser também maneira de, de dizer não, queremos a nossa liberdade, a nossa expressão musical e queremos a nossa verdade, a nossa identidade e a nossa história. So religion, as far as Guinea-Bissau is concerned, it both a continuity from the youth point of view, but it is also a discontinuity. So religion, going back to what we heard yesterday from Maneka, I would like to use that word. Religion in Guinea-Bissau is more of a ngumbe rather than a practice of one particular belonging that may be, be that uh, uh, Catholicism, Islam, or Protestantism or African tradition of religion for that matter. I'm not talking about Ngumbe religion here as a mixture or mixing. I struggle with that word in my book and in other uh, articles that I have published. I use the word creolization. But creolization I'm using here not in the sense of mixing, not in the sense of putting things together, but it is a dialogue. In Patriziadi's word, it is energy field in which things come together. They may not necessarily mix, but they have a form of communicating. Muitas vezes nós estamos mais em dois acordos. And most of the time we play uh, only two chords. One and five. Which is one and five. Like this. Porque hace años eh, las mujeres ya se casaban a los 13 años. Yeah. Because uh, in the past, yeah. until recently, women would be married by the age of 13. Normalmente, eso no debería ser porque son prematuros. No, todavía no son jóvenes. Son, para mí son niñas que yo no acepto eso. Mm -hmm. She doesn't accept that. She says when you're, if you're 13, you're still uh, a child. You're not, you're not. You're not even a youth. Pero es la tradición nadie puede luchar contra eso. But that, that's tradition and it's hard to fight it. Y yo, yo tengo 23 años, me casé a los 18. She's 23, she got married when she was 18. Y tuve a mi, mi, mi hija a los 19 años. She had a daughter, uh, her child when she was 19. Pero para mí, aún yo sigo siendo joven, pero muy joven. Me, me considero muy joven y sigo disfrutando de la vida. Pero yo todavía pienso en mí como siendo joven, muy joven. Y yo todavía puedo disfrutar la vida. Pero en África, yo cuando me fui en África, vi mis amigas que están casadas, digo, hostia, parece que yo creo que la han desformado. Eh, no pueden ni peinarse bien, no pueden llevar pantalón, tienen que llevar ropa de vieja y eso, ¿no? Yo siempre digo en las canciones o hablando, tú es el 
corazón. Si, aunque tú tienes 50 años y si te sientes joven, pero Ale, disfruta de la vida y ya está. Punto. Gen youth is a kind of gendered category. But, John, you somehow uh, interpret youth as a kind of age category. And I think that no longer applies to many West African countries, like also what Macan and also you say said. People enter into marriage at a much, well, men enter into a marriage at a much older age. So I think youth has become a very flexible category. And I think that's also what Alcinda Honwana mentions when she speaks about youth in weighthood. <laughs> By about, by, by about 10, 10 young men, that, well, they can vary in age, they can be you know, from 6 onwards to 60, and so the status of the Kangaroo depends on the age of the people accompanying you. So clearly these, this whole heritageization of Kangaroo comes with, uh, you know, in, with new forms of, of audience, uh, performer audience relationships. Anyway, just to make the point that although this process of objectification is clearly happening to the, to the performance, meanwhile, youth are still, you know, experimenting, uh, exploring new possibilities and continuing to produce a, um, an entertaining performance, irrespective of all the regulations that elders and UNESCO might want to impose on them. What is amazing is about uh, how Senegambia was linked to Louisiana, but also especially what, uh, what uh, Boubacar Barry called La Senegambie du Sud, Southern Senegambia. <coughs> Le pays des riziculteurs, the land of the rice growers. I call it rice land. Something else also survived in Louisiana. Some of you probably know what I'm talking about, the Mardi Gras Indians in New Orleans. This is a way for the black people to acknowledge the help they got from the Indians in the early days of Louisiana, of French, Lu French Louisiana. Earlier, you talk, uh, Mr. Dejong, you, you talked about uh, people uh, singing around the Kankuran. I also heard people singing around the Kankuran about Mama Chori. Sabare, Mama Chori, Sabare. And Mama Chori, according to, my, to what I was called, uh, told, is Mama Jumbo. Mama Jumbo is a deity of fecundity and the protector of mothers and their children among the rice growers of Casamance and Guinea-Bissau. And uh, Mama Jumbo is everywhere until today in Louisiana. They, they don't call her anymore Mama Jumbo, they call her Mambo Jumbo. There is a song, I mean, it is a poem, Be careful what you do, O Mama Jumbo, the god of the Congo, and all the other gods of Congo will hoodoo you.
being in, in descent communities is something that's passed down from one generation to the next within a griot family. You have to be in the bloodline, and that's the way the Savar knowledge gets passed down. But when you have um, this, these situations in which many griot drummers are going elsewhere to Europe, to North America, um, you start having a shift, I think, from the, the importance of the descent um, the, the descent community to the affinity community where you have new, new groups of people, new, new communities who are not born into the tradition but are, have come to, to know Sabar just through their love of drumming. Most of my performance uh, for the so many years uh, of being here, they are either a band context or a collaborative context, so I most, most of the time play my own music. Either I'm playing a Brazilian music or suffer uh, collaborating with different people where you bring something and then they kind of twist it a little bit so that it makes it more interesting, give them a, a platform to express themselves so it kind of loses the pure traditional context. So that way of working, you know, it kind of makes you always uh, keep that in mind in your compositions. So therefore, uh, yeah, that kind of changes a lot the way I approach uh, the Kora. I feel like to listen a lot of instruments. Voilà, donc, uh, it's my place. Voilà. Donc, j'ai essayé maintenant de vraiment changer ma façon, puisque le balafon, c'était un truc qui est très rapide. En Europe, ici, on ne comprend pas ce que vraiment, quand un balafoniste se joue, on ne comprend pas tellement c'est trop rapide. Mais moi aussi, j'ai essayé de jouer pendant que les gens dorment. Il écoute la musique, mais il dort. Le, le morceau que je vais faire, c'est un morceau qui... C'est un très vieux morceau, Sujata. Donc, dans l'ancienneté, quand on le joue, on le joue comme ça. Now, if you want people to listen this or uh, to while they are relaxing, <laughs> and this is the this arrangement of it.
boundaries and transcending them at various levels. So for me, um, as a linguist, um, it always meant that I found it was an essential task for us to try and make sense of this dichotomy of the lower Casanos, um, where we have uh, more than 30 named languages and the great cultural convergence, yet this extreme multilingualism and the maintenance of these very complex repertoires. So you have this fusion, this mix, the passage huh, that we have evoked all the time, yet you have this maintenance of we are Bailuk in some contexts, we are Gujarar, Nandandjahar in some contexts, we are Jola in other contexts. That's not seen as a contradiction, but as a particular contextualized social political identity. So small vulnerable groups that needed um, to maintain these close ties um, and needed to multiply alliances um, and they could not become similar because at the same time this was the epicenter of these transatlantic slave trade. So they needed to be able to other groups or individuals because they needed to participate in the slave trade, we you know, in order to be able to protect themselves at the same time. So it's a very <coughs> dialectic identity. And I think um, maintaining multiple identities and indexing them also through different languages in different contexts was a strategic tool to maintain that. So to be similar and different in the right context. <laughs> so good to have history uh, and music brought together. It's so great to bring in all of these people from all over the world, multilingual conference, and a conference in which people have been laid back and not constrained by having to read boring papers. Not one single person has gone to sleep during any of these sessions, which is the highest uh, praise I can give it. It's been fun, and it's also been a fantastic learning curve for most of us, I think. Great, great conference.